I made a video giving an overview of my philosophy. I tried to be brief. I left a lot of things out, but it was still two hours. And it still couldn't include nearly everything. So I thought back over what I said, and I thought there was a really big part that was missing that I wanted to talk about. I didn't really talk much about morality. I did touch on it in two main ways. The first way is I talked about politics and economics, and that deals with the morality of how to treat other people, how to organize society, how to deal with other people, how they should deal with you, you know, don't be violent to them, don't commit crimes, interact on a voluntary basis, leave them alone if you can't do anything that you think is good and they think is good. That's important, but I think that's less than 50% of morality. I think personal morality, how you treat yourself, how you live your life, what your goals are, that kind of thing, is more than 50%, and how you deal with other people is less than 50%. They're both very important, large categories, but I don't want to give the impression that societal level morality is like the main aspect. The other way I dealt with morality indirectly was I talked about reason, rationality, how to learn, how to make progress. And I don't think I explicitly said it, but a large part of my view of morality is you should act rationally. Irrationality is immoral. You should be interested in the truth. You should be curious about ideas. You should try to learn things. That's what a good life is. I regard error correction as a major aspect of morality. Things that block error correction and prevent errors from being corrected are immoral. That's what's bad. That's what hurts people. Things which allow for progress to be made, for problems to get solved, for science to be improved for better ideas to get figured out, and for mistakes to be fixed. Those are moral. Those are the kinds of things you should be aiming for. There's a lot of scope for people to be different, to have their own tastes, to have their own interests, to choose their own values. But there are certain very broad, universally applicable things, like what methods of thinking are actually capable of getting the right answer and what aren't, that everyone should be doing and should care about, and it just applies to everyone. And the moral principles that apply to everyone are the most important in general. The reason they're applying to everyone is that everyone actually needs them. There's not really any optionality there. Some other things about morality is productivity. You should want to be a productive person. You should want to earn your own way in life. You shouldn't view work as something to avoid. You should figure out some kind of productive work that you like. And part of your life should be productive. If you're just avoiding all types of productivity, something's wrong there. There's something screwed up where there's no productive activities that you like. That's a bad way to be. It's a bad attitude to life. It's okay to accept charity sometimes temporarily. Um, maybe even long-term if you got, like, uh, a long-term injury, say. But you shouldn't particularly like charity. You shouldn't want to be a charity case. You should make a very serious effort not to be a charity case. It's better if you figure out how to deal with reality effectively and you do it. You should be happy to do that. You should want to do that, to live in the world and to deal with it and to take effective steps to run your life rather than to be a charity case. You should also have independent judgment. You should think for yourself. Don't just believe what other people say. Don't believe what the experts tell you or what the majority believes. Um, try to use your own brain. That's what you have it for. You should seek happiness. I think joy and positive things are good and people should respect them and pursue them. That's a, a fairly standard view, but there are some people who seem to like something about suffering or to just not view it as all that bad. It is that bad. People shouldn't suffer. Suffering sucks. A big part of morality is trying to figure out how to organize your life so you're happy instead of suffering. 
That should be a major goal. You also should consider what makes you happy. Um, why does that make you happy? You should put critical thought into that. And what do you find fun? Some people find it fun to get really drunk at a party and black out and not remember it. I do not recommend that. I think that is a bad way to be. So you have to have critical thinking about what makes you happy and what your values are, but you should pers you should have values and you should pursue them. Do your best to choose good values and to actually like them. You can't just intellectually decide, oh, I'm going to value that because it's all rational. You have to understand it well enough and thoroughly enough that you remember it all the time and that it becomes like natural and second nature to you, that it's actually part of your life, that, it, that your emotions correspond with it instead of contradicting it. Integrity is another big one. I've got an essay um, arguing against lying that I recommend. One of the problems is people view lying and integrity in a really narrow way. There's a nice line about it in The Fountainhead by Ayn Rand which fans may remember. So I recommend that essay because it talks about types of lying that not everyone recognizes as lying and how to more thoroughly care about and respect the truth and be honest and how to make that a bigger part of your life than just don't consciously intentionally say something you know is false and you're aware it's false when you say it. You know, that's too narrow. There's a lot of other things people do that are similar and bad. Another part of integrity is rejecting contradictions. You want everything about your life to fit together, to make an integrated whole, instead of a bunch of disconnected pieces and you never uh, compare them with each other or look for connections, and you don't see all the ways that you're contradicting yourself and living inconsistently. Another big part of morality, not on the list, but I talked about it in the previous video, is being connected to reality. You want your actions, your ideas, to actually deal with reality rather than ignoring reality or faking reality or trying to go your own way against reality. Those things aren't going to work. You have to live in reality and figure out how reality works and what you can do within the boundaries of reality. One other thing I wanted to add to the previous video is a little more about parenting. So the goal of parenting should be that your child rejects some of your errors, not that you transfer all your ideas to him. This is how progress happens. There's only going to be progress if your child disagrees with you on some points and has different ideas than you. If he has all the same ideas as you, that's not progress. You know, it's, it's identical. Progress happens when your child uses his judgment and changes some things. A lot of people, their goal is basically pass on their ideas to their child to make him into a good, competent, smart adult. And then when he's an adult, he can be an independent thinker. And I think that's a really messed up perspective. And the independent thinking needs to start as a child. And once you basically transfer all your ideas to him and he's an adult and grown up, it's too late. He can change some things at that point, but in general, um, a lot of the core ideas are not going to change at that point. It's not impossible, but it doesn't happen very much. Um, once you indoctrinate your kid with your ideas for 20 years, uh, it's very hard to undo. And it's a lot better if some errors get corrected younger than that. If you're not, if you let your child have space to disagree with you on some points at a much younger age, then it's much more possible for him to reject some of your really important big bad ideas. And that can be hard for the parent because they think they're right and they think, oh, my child's different and they don't want to tolerate that kind of diversity and dissent because they think their child is fucking up his life and they're worried for him. But people need freedom and especially intellectual freedom. And if you take that away from someone for the first 20 years of their life, you will destroy their mind and you're just going to get a sort of a clone of your ideas, but not an independent thinker. So if you want more info, go to elliottemple.com and the link to the essay about lying will be in the YouTube description.